promising developments this morning in the search for Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. Two separate signals that could be pinging from the black boxes have been picked up in a remote section of the Indian Ocean. We want to get right to ABC's David Curley for all of the latest. Good morning, David. Lara, this really is the best lead since this plane disappeared 31 days ago. They were able to narrow the search to this strip of Indian Ocean right here. You see it. And they were Chinese say they heard some pings down here at the bottom of the screen. But up here, the Australians and the Americans using U.S. gear heard the signal two different times. And searchers think they may have heard both black boxes. On board this Australian vessel, the Ocean Shield, this U.S. ping locator heard something two separate times. There's been two, uh, two contacts thus far, um, and they were early on in the process. It was in the middle of the night, Saturday into Sunday, when crews heard something like this and saw it on their screens. For two hours and 20 minutes, they heard the signals. They turned back and heard it again for 13 minutes. The two hits about a mile apart. Clearly, this is a most promising lead. And uh, probably in the search so far, uh, it's, the, it's probably the best information that we have had. This morning, the Ocean Shield is crisscrossing a very small search area, three square miles of the Indian Ocean with depths of nearly three miles. And they already think they may have heard both boxes, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder. We did hear two signals. Uh, there was very similar uh, frequency ranges involved coming from different locations. That's actually pretty encouraging because remember, um, there are two black boxes involved. The searchers would like a third hit, allowing them to triangulate where these signal pulses may be coming from. Then this underwater mapping robot will be sent to the bottom of the ocean where its sonar will look for wreckage. The best lead so far and searchers are struck that they may be close without ever even seeing wreckage on the surface, the normal telltale sign of where to look. I think it's quite, quite extraordinary. Uh, and what I'd like to see now is us find some wreckage um, because that will, that will basically help solve the mystery. Now, this is remarkable. That first pinging the Australians and Americans heard was when they had actually reeled in this listening device. It actually brought it up closer to the surface to prepare for a turn, and they heard the first ping. The manufacturer of those pingers tells us even though we are past the guaranteed battery life, George, they believe that the searchers have three or four more good solid days of signals to try and really pinpoint if this is the wreckage. Let's hope they're right. Okay, David Curry, thanks very much. Let's get more on this now from ABC's aviation consultant, Steve Ganyard. I'm sitting here with one of the black boxes right here on the desk, Steve, and everyone has said this is the most promising lead yet after so many false ones. It sure is, George. It's very, very encouraging. We've got two solid hits. If we can just get one more, they can triangulate a really good position. But even with these two, I think we have a very good chance, maybe not today, maybe not this month, but we're going to unravel the mysteries of Flight 370. And we just heard David say that the, the manufacturer believes there could be several more days left of pinging on this, on this black box. The range is anywhere from 30 to 45 days, but in part, it depends on how old the battery was. Right, and, and we're, we're, we're down to just days, so hopefully in the next couple days they can get that hit. But even if they don't, remember we have this side-looking sonar that makes sort of a grainy black and white picture of the bottom of the ocean floor. I still think that even if we lose the pingers, we're in a small enough search area that we're going to be able to find some wreckage on the bottom. And in fact, it was in the Air France case, wasn't it, that even though the pinger had gone out, they were finally able to find wreckage months, years later. That's correct, and that's the key there, George. It could be years later, but I think that based on what we have in terms of position now, it's just a matter of time before we find this airplane. Okay, Steve Gaynor, thanks very much.